What's going on y'all, it's David David. I know it's been such a long time since I posted some Borderlands content, but I've been playing so much Tiny Tina's these past couple weeks, and today I have a build that I'm very proud to show off for you guys. Did you enjoy playing Borderlands 3 as much as I did? And well, did you enjoy playing Flak? Because I sure as hell loved playing Flak. I loved being able to go invisible, I loved being able to be tanky, but still dealing big PP crit numbers, and I loved, absolutely loved being able to play the game while having a companion by my side. So when I found out about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands in production, I was crossing my fingers hoping and praying to our Lord Butt Stallion that there would be some type of build that felt similar to playing Borderlands 3 Flak. And we f***ing got it! I present to you my Back in Flak Wonderlands build guide for the Clawbringer and Stabomancer. This build focuses solely on bringing as many aspects of Borderlands 3 Flak as possible back into Wonderlands. If you played Borderlands 3, you will see some familiar interactions, or interflactions as I like to call them. Some might be dead on and some might be quite a stretch, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> interflections. Without any further ado, let's take a look at the skill tree. As I stated earlier, we are going to be using the Clawbringer as well as Stabomancer classes. Kicking it off with the action skill first, my Flak enthusiasts already know where I'm going with this one. I personally wasn't really a fan of Gravity Snare, but sure, like Gamma Burst was cool, and sure, Rack Attack was fun to throw around racks on no cooldown, but Fade Away was and has always been the moneymaker for me. So, From the Shadows was pretty much a no brainer for this build. From the Shadows feels almost identical to using the Fade Away action skill with the Gorillas in the Mist augment in Borderlands 3. Now moving on to the skill points, I will not be going over every single skill that we invested into here, but I will be covering the most notable ones. First on the Clawbringer skill tree, I max out both Oath of Fire and Oath of Thunder to gain bonus damage for myself as well as my pet companion Wyvern. I also maxed out Dragon Aura to gain a significant elemental damage buff that I am able to spread to nearby allies. Moving to the Stabomancer tree, I maxed out the Haste and Swift Death combo, giving me extra movement speed as well as damage from the movement speed. I also maxed out the Sneak Attack and a Thousand Cuts combo to deal bonus damage while increasing my damage dealt from those crits. Those two synergize very well with our action skill to stack crits on enemies. Finally, I placed a single point into the Stabomancer Capstone Executioner's Blade for just some extra DPS. Moving on to the gear, we'll get started with the guns first. So my very first gun that I'm sure you are all familiar with by now is the Livewire Dahlia Submachine Gun with an enchantment that increases our damage dealt for some time after activating our action skill. Connecting this to Borderlands 3, the Livewire feels something like in between the Redistributor and the Brainstormer. It's not quite as good as the two of those, but it does work wonders. The Livewire chains that shock laser damage to nearby enemies, and those chains can crit as well. This gun is by far one of my favorite mobbing guns currently, but it doesn't work so well against bosses. What does work really well against bosses though is the liquid cooling Skulldugger pistol. For my flak lovers, this pistol feels pretty much as if the Infinity and the Pestilence had a love child that grew up to outshine both of its parents. The liquid cooling pistol is a machine pistol that as far as I can tell only drops in frost damage and as long as you can hit crits, this gun will not overheat or break. It does insane damage and I mean insane. Any undead enemy or enemy with a grayish health bar will get absolutely shredded. The damage is nice and all, but my favorite part of this pistol is how it feels like I have leave no trace and megavore combo all over again, essentially making it so I crit a bunch and I never have to reload ever. The enchantment that I have for mine is the same as the live wire. And you'll notice that I like to try and keep all of my guns on each build with the same enchantment so I can swap between them pretty fluidly. Now moving on to the next gun for my back and flak build is the Queen's Cry Stoker Pistol. As you can probably guess by the name, the Queen's Cry is pretty closely related to the Queen's Call from Borderlands 3, except instead of every crit producing a special effect, only some of them drop a meteor. It actually looks a little bit more like the Tig's Boom from Borderlands 3. Just like the liquid cooling, this pistol shreds undead enemies and is really good for boss killing. I have the underbarrel zip rockets on mine, and these things deal so much damage in such a short period of time. This gun is also fantastic for mobbing. My last gun that I run with this build is more of a flavor piece than a damage dealer, but the damage is still nothing to scoff at. The last gun that I run is the Hawkins Wrath. The Hawkins Wrath is not like any other gun from Borderlands 3, but what it does do is shoot out wyverns, or racks as I like to call them, that fly into enemies and blow up dealing pretty decent damage. 
Since it is a tour gun, it also comes with a sticky mode, and the sticky mode for this gun spawns mini racks that hone in on enemies when the stickies explode. The enchantment that I run for my Hawkins Wrath is different from the other guns, and that is because I like to combo this gun with my spell. The spell that I normally run with this build is the Burgeoning Flock of Spectral Talons. After a short charge, this spell shoots out a rack or wyvern that chases down enemies and spawns even smaller wyverns. This spell feels so much like rack attack and I'm so incredibly happy that I essentially get to not only run fade away on this build, but also run rack attack. The spell enchantment that I run buffs my damage after I cast a spell, and for my flak fans out there, you know why I'm running this because it's similar to the rack attack debuff anointment. Going back to my shotgun enchantment, I run this because once I activate my action skill, my spell's cooldown will be reduced and I will spawn an extra rack. So if I have the shotgun out while I activate fade away, it's basically just rack city. Shout out Taiga. Other spells that you might see me running on this build are the various different elemental buff meister skills. These paired with From the Shadows basically just shred through anything while giving you massive amounts of movement speed, and as I went over earlier in the skill tree section, movement speed is really good with this build. The enchantments vary, but for the most part, I like running either the same ones as my rack attack spell, or the gun damage boosting one after I cast a spell. Moving on to the rest of my gear, you'll notice that I try to focus first on the enchantments that maximize my damage, and then worry about what piece it is last. For my melee weapon, I am currently using the Fatebringer Valora weapon. Not only does this weapon just look completely badass, it also shoots out racks when you melee with it. These racks not only deal decent lightning damage, but they also restore your ward based on the damage dealt. The enchantment for my sword increases my gun damage by a lot once I activate my action skill, so after I pop my fade away or from the shadows, not only do I get guaranteed crits, but I also do get bonus gun damage. Now moving on to my ward, I do use a body rune here that feels very similar to a flesh melter auto idol artifact from Borderlands 3, pretty much like something you would use on like a corrosive flak build. Once you kill an enemy with this ward, you restore 15% of your maximum health, just like the auto idol, and you gain a 20% bonus to fire damage instead of the corrosive damage like the flesh melter. This synergizes extremely well with not only the Oath of Fire from the Clawbringer skill tree, but also the enchantment that is on it, which boosts our elemental damage by a whopping 35% during our action skill. Also, since all of our guns and our spell deals elemental damage, those directly get a boost in damage as well. Moving on next to the amulet, I don't have a special legendary one that does anything crazy, but this one does have some neat synergies with my build. The bonus fire damage just stacks onto my skills and shield passive, while the stabomancer power grants me bonus increased critical hit chance and extra duration for my fadeaway. Loot luck percent really just helps my drops and the status effect chance primarily is to boost my chance of freezing the enemies that don't just get evaporated immediately. There is a lot of room to improve here, something like action skill cooldown percent or just like damage dealt percent would be so much better. As for the rings, just like everyone else right now, I am still farming for that absolute god roll ring. I still have a few that I like to switch in between, but the ones that I have been using are just these ones. The purple ring has the most action skill cooldown rate that I've come across on a ring and the orange one has some good synergies with the two frost pistols that I run. On to the final and arguably one of the most important pieces of this build, the class mod. Just like the rings, I am still working on farming for like the god roll one, but this one has hit the most important parts. Firstly, it comes with Clawbringer and Stabomancer power increases. Since I am using the Stabo action skill, I think I'd rather have these flip so I get more Stabomancer power. I mainly use this class mod though because of the legendary effect. This class mod reduces my crit chance by 50%, but increases my crit damage also by 50%. As I showed you earlier, with Fade Away, we are guaranteed to crit with every shot, giving this essentially zero drawback during our action skill. Also, the Stabomancer power in the skill tree gives you bonus crit chance that pretty much equalizes out the reduced crit chance. The modifiers on this one aren't really anything to write home about. I mean, they are still useful, but there are many other modifiers that would do so much better here. And that actually about wraps it up for my back and flak build. If you stick around, I will briefly go over the gameplay strategy for this build, but if not, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope you have fun using this build on Chaos 20. If you enjoyed the build, please make sure to rack attack the hell out of that thumbs up button, and make sure to leave me a comment down below or in my Discord, and I will reply as quickly as possible. Now for the mobbing strategy, I tend to use either my Livewire or Hawkins Wrath guns. The general combo is action skill first, and then after you activate that, 
just start shooting and while you're shooting during the action skill, cast your spell. The live wire is really good at breaking off shields for multiple enemies and clearing out the smaller trash mobs, while the Hawkins Wrath is also really good at melting flesh health enemies and pretty much just gets rid of the need for aiming. For bossing, I do lean more towards the liquid cooling or even the Queen's Cry because the high rate of fire and damage does really well to most enemies. The combo is pretty much the same, except for boss fights I do like to use the Buffmeister spells instead of the Rack Attack spell. Activate your action skill first, and then start shooting and at the same time cast your spell. This combo increases your crit chance by 100%, increases your outgoing damage, and increases your movement speed all while invisible. During the downtime before the combo comes up again, you can either just run around and wait for cooldowns, or you can swap to your Hawkins Wrath and shoot stickies everywhere while running around without having to aim. That's it for my full in-depth back and flak build guide. Make sure to cleansing flames that subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date on all of my content and I will check you all in the next video. See ya!